hand upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. The word of the Lord is blessed. Mm -hmm. The question that the Lord has given me to address on tonight is, what is it that God has caused you to see? What is it that God has caused you to see? Mm -hmm. Now the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis in the second chapter, the seventh verse, that God made man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. That tells us specifically that God created all mankind. He made us. He gave us a neural system. He gave us a mucoskeletal system. He gave us a digestive system. He also gave us a respiratory system. Yes, and then he gave us an ocular system, and that is the system in which we see uh -huh. out of our eyes. God made man to see. He did not make man blind. Because when you read the account in the book of Genesis, in the second chapter, it tells us that God then placed a man in a garden called Eden. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Eden, there was rivers that flowed from it. And also in Eden, we find that there were certain trees that God had planted there. Mm -hmm. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Wow. And God told man that he could eat freely of all of the trees in the garden. Uh -huh. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that man could not eat thereof. Mm -hmm. And so we understand and know that God gave man eyes to see. Yes. Because God made man to see things and to see the glory of God in all of its essence, in all of its existence. God made man to see the glory that he created because God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, God made man to see everything that he had made, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Yeah, uh -huh. God made man to see the mountain tops, to yeah. see the valley low. Mm -hmm. God made man to see all of the great spectacular things that he had made. Yes, he but man lost his eyesight in oh, the book of Genesis right. in the third chapter. When that 15 verse man sinned and God had to condemn the sin that man committed. Man ate from the forbidden fruit and therefore God had to send judgment upon the man. The judgment upon the man was that he would work the earth and that the earth would have to give forth its abundance through the toll of his labor. For the woman he multiplied her childbearing and sorrow. And we know that God had given women to have the children but man was supposed to go out and work in the field. And it's a beautiful thing to see a man trying to do some work. We live in an age and a day now when men don't want to work. Amen. Some men want to stay home and read the newspaper, read the funny papers. Amen. But I'm so glad that God made some BMWs in the house. Now, I'm not talking about the car that I drive, but I'm talking about a black man working. God made men to work, and God made men to have vision. Amen. Because when you go down and read through the Bible historicity, you see in these 11th chapter of the book of Genesis that there was a tower called Babel. And that those that built the tower of Babel built it to go as high as the heavens. There was a man back then named Nimrod. And Nimrod had vision. Yeah. For the Bible says that he instructed the people to come to the plains of Shinar uh -huh. and to build that tower, to build it up into heaven. But we also know that that wasn't a part of God's plan. God did not intend for men to rise up into heaven, but he told man to be fruitful and to multiply, to replenish the earth. Amen. In order to have vision, you got to be able to replenish the earth. You got to be able to be fruitful. But we got a lot of folks sitting in church that can't see beyond the pew that they're sitting in. Got a lot of folks sitting in church that can't see beyond the four walls. But I'm so glad that we got some missionaries here today from Chicago and from New Jersey that was able to see all the way over here. And I'm so glad we got some folks here that was able to look all the way over to New Jersey and look all the way over to Chicago and welcome us over here. So they have vision and we have vision. And when God gives you vision, you want to do a work for the Lord. Everybody shout work up in this place. You want to do a work for God. You don't want to sit back. You want to be laid back. You don't want to be laid back. 
but you want to get your hands on something and begin to see beyond the boundaries. That's Amen. We got to learn to see beyond what's around us. Amen. We got to learn to see beyond our community. We got to learn to see beyond our towns and our cities. We got to learn to see beyond our own families. Because when God calls us to do a work, sometimes you got to be able to go out and do that work and your family has to stay where they're at. I thank God for my wife. Amen. I love my wife. My wife allows me to go out. Amen. She's praying for me right now as I'm speaking. Amen. I got two beautiful girls that know that daddy got a vision that's beyond boundaries. And they pray for their daddy. But they know that daddy's going to another place. Going to another country. But I'm so glad that God gives us vision. Is there anybody here beside the preacher that's glad that God gives you vision? If you're glad that God gives you vision, you better get up and give God some glory. text. We understand that God here gives us that Jesus has come. come on, Amen. Yeah. Jesus was foreseen by the prophet Isaiah. Amen. According to Isaiah's prophecy, Jesus would be the one to take away our sins. According to Isaiah's prophecy, Jesus would be the one to die. A horrible death be beaten for us. So Isaiah is known as the eagle-eyed prophet because he was able to see some 750 years into the future and see Jesus Christ. He never got a chance to see him in person, but he knew through the prophetic word, through the burden of the word of the Lord that comes to all prophets, that there was someone that would come. And you got to be able to see your future. Amen. You can't be looking at your past. Some of us sitting in here on tonight, we're so concerned about what's going on at home. Some of you can't wait to get back at home to look at TV. Amen. The TV ain't going nowhere. You better be able to see what God is doing right now. Some of you want to watch Daniel. Some of you want to watch Chicago Fire. Some of you want to watch Chicago PD. But I'm so glad that I don't want to watch TV, but I want to watch the move of the Holy Ghost. And, and, and he had to sin all through the different dispensations. Amen. There's seven dispensations in the Bible. And God had to send through every dispensation someone that would be obedient to him. Amen. In the first dispensation, during the dispensation of innocence, amen, Adam failed us. During the dispensation of conscience, man multiplied evilly upon the earth. During the dispensation of human government, it didn't work out what they were doing at Babel. During the dispensation of the law, the law was good, but it couldn't keep men holy. But now we're living in a dispensation called grace. And I'm so glad that we got some grace. I'm glad that we got grace. But I'm looking forward to the next dispensation, the future coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is there anybody here looking for Jesus? I dare you to shout Jesus out right now. His name is Jesus. And in our text, he comes and He's looking at this man, and this man is coming to him, a blind man. Mm -hmm. Amen. Blind because of the fact that he had a physical infirmity. Yeah. He was blind not because of the fact that he had been injured. He was not blind because of the fact that he had lost his sight due, due to some debilitating disease. But he's blind because he doesn't know that God meant him to be born blind so that Jesus could come and give him sight. Is there anybody here that believes that Jesus comes in our points in our life to give us the things that we need to do? He he doesn't just come to give us a new house. He doesn't just come to give us a new ride. He doesn't just come to give us a new boo. But he comes to give us the things that we need and give us the anointing from the Holy Ghost that will allow us to know that he is with us. Is there anybody here that got the Holy Ghost? I dare you to shout holy! Got the Holy Ghost. And so the man is blind. And he meets Jesus at Bethsaida. But one thing that we're going to take away from my first point is that the community could not see clearly. Amen. Amen. Everybody around in that first, in that eight chapter, from the first verse down to where we get to the 22nd verse, they're all seeing things differently. Yeah. First, the Pharisees, they didn't believe that Jesus was who he was. Yeah. Amen. They wanted to see a sign. Uh -huh. Amen. Do you know any folk like that? Uh -huh. You tell 
tell them that Jesus is good, but they say, can you show it to me on YouTube? Is it on my Facebook? Could you Twitter or Instagram me with it? Jesus don't work on those venues. Jesus works by faith. But the Bible says in Hebrews 11, do one, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. Is there anybody here that got any faith? Amen. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. You'll find that in Romans 10 and 17. Amen. Because we're not walking by what I see. Amen. If I was walking by what I saw when I came in 2012, I wouldn't be here right now. But I thank God that I got vision beyond boundaries. What has God given you to see tonight? What has God put in your life? What has God birthed in your spirit? What has God given you in your heart for you to do for him? Is there anybody here that has a work for the Lord? I dare you to shout I got it! a wall on. And you got to be careful about walls. Because in the book of Revelation, there's seven walls that's going to come on the face of the earth. So Jesus pronounced a wall upon the inhabitants of the city of Bethesda because the people did not believe in him. He said, if I did the same miracles that I did in another city or here, they would believe in what I'm doing. But the people at Bethesda did not want to believe. So the city did not see clearly. And then we get to his homeboys. Look at your neighbor and say he's talking about his homeboys or his home girls. Yeah, I'm talking about your homie. I'm talking about your homie. Your homie. They can't see Jesus clearly. Amen. Because the disciples were walking around saying, who's going to be the greatest? Who's going to be this? Who's going to be that? Because all they could see was the pulpit. All they could see was the cheap seat in the pulpit. But I'm so glad that I learned early on that I can preach on the street. That I can preach it all up, up. This God up in this house. I can go in and open up my big mouth and give God glory. Is there anybody here beside the preacher that know that God has called you to give a word? I dare you to stand on your feet and shout glory. Yeah, they didn't see too clearly. Why did you say that, brother preacher? Because uh, in the word of God, Jesus told them in that same eight chapter, who do men say that I am? Well, some say you're the reincarnation of John the Baptist. Some say you're the prophet Elijah risen back again. And then he had to put the question pointedly to them. Who do you say that I am? And then it was Peter that said, thou art the Christ. Amen. But they didn't see clearly. Peter made that confession. And a little while later, we see Peter running away when Jesus gets locked up. Amen. We see all of the other disciples hanging out in a room. Not the upper room, but hanging out in the ballroom. Hanging out in another room. Amen. I want you to know that when God gives you vision, when God gives you sight, you can't look what's around you. You got to be able to see on your own, which brings me to my last point. You got to be released from the expectations of others. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. If I would have listened to people when they told me that I was no good and would never amount to anything, I wouldn't be up here preaching the word of God on tonight. I'd still be running around in my mess. If I would have listened to somebody and told me, you don't need to go to no St. Thomas. You don't need to go to no Berlin. It's work around the house. It's work here in North. But I'm so glad that I got to work in North. But God has given me to go out and to step out by faith. And that's why I'm here on tonight, not because I'm trying to be big, not because I'm trying to seek the title, but God has given me a vision, and my vision is to minister to the people of God. Amen. If you're with me on tonight, shout yeah! yeah. Hallelujah. I've been released from the expectations of others. But what does that mean? That means that nobody could stop me. Nobody could tell me what I'm going to be. And I'm so glad. I feel my hoop coming on right about now. See, when I get to that point right there, that's when I get my hoop right. I'm so glad that the God I serve, he's able to pick you up. He's able to give you vision. Is there anybody here that knows that God is able? But you gotta have him on board. What do you mean, preacher? I know I'm saved. 
I know I've been filled. According to Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. And in Samaria. Excuse me Judea. And Samaria. And to the uttermost parts of the earth. See when you got vision. You can see around the earth. And that's what God gives us. He gives us vision. To see around us. To see over us. To see through some things. God will give you vision. He will open up your spiritual. Your spiritual eyesight. And he'll give you what you need to see. Stop looking at TV. Get off that Facebook. Stop tweeting. Don't send me another Instagram. But I'm going to delete your page. I don't want to see what you're doing. I'm glad you had a birthday. Happy birthday to you. But I'm so glad that the God I serve. He sends us out to, to do a work for him. Is there anybody that can sing out my God? I dare you to leap on your feet. I dare you to clap your hands. I dare you to open your mouth. I dare you to give him glory. But when you praise him, the heaven's glory will come down. Well, what do you mean, preacher? See, you got to be able to see it. The Bible says that one day we're going back with Jesus when he comes the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the trump of God and the dead I said the dead I said the dead in Christ are going to rise first then we that are alive and remain we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air how many caught up folk are in the house tonight how many caught up folk ready to give God glory you <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Hey. When the word of God comes to deliver us, you that with your hands lifted are going through something. I want you to come to this altar because anywhere the saints gather, it becomes an altar. Please come up front now. You that are going through that want prayer, step out. Step out. Step out. Don't be bound anymore. Come. 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 Because God is here. Hallelujah. You've been going through some stuff. Hallelujah. You've been going through a test of your faith. Anywhere the saints gather, it becomes a sanctuary. If we were on a sidewalk, it would be the sanctuary. But right here, right now, in close quarters, in this beautiful room, the Holy Ghost is here. And he's come to deliver. He's come to bring you out. Oh, he's come. I'm going to ask Pastor Silcott and Pastor Hazel.